guys in same game free here. It's like I'm chopping down trees in this wood. You two motherfuckers, I don't know. It's, it was an analogy I was going somewhere with, and it wasn't good, so let's, let's just excuse it and move on. Anywho, I figured this was a video that I feel like uh, I've come to a realization over these last, I probably would say last week, uh, and I feel like it's something to relate to you guys, because I feel like the biggest problem with the Nintendo community is that we're under this assumption, or this presumption, that the 3DS needs to die. We need to move on through the 3DS, we need to push it to the side, and it all be switch life. That's what we need. That's apparently that's what that's the decision we came to. And then I'll be fair. I was like this the almost the entirety of the Switch's announcement. Like when the Switch was announced, I was like, please hell even before the Switch is announced, I was like, combine them, make them one and the same, do it. And then I kind of and then over these few months, I've kind of slowly but surely started realizing it really didn't hit me until last week that that doesn't make any fucking sense. And I went and when we, we, I think we just recently heard about how Nintendo wants to keep the 3DS going until 2019. We're like, oh, it's time for it to die. And then we, and then people had to sit down and go, wait a minute, but the DS was around for almost 10 years. Like the DS was around for a while. So why, why, why does the 3DS need to die off quicker than the DS does? On top of which, when you realize, considering this whole, we just came out of the Wii U era, and as much as I might enjoy that console or its games, it was a rough Nintendo era for the fans and the company. But one of the major things that kept them afloat was the 3DS and the Amiibo stuff and, all, you know, small little things. The point is, the 3DS was carrying Nintendo for a while. So if you're going to get rid of the, if you're going to get rid of the DS line and, and walk away from that, why would you do it anytime soon? I mean, think about it. Uh... The Nintendo DS didn't stop production until 2014, which was three years into the life cycle of the Nintendo 3DS. And I think that was just because it's like, look, and it's also because the handhelds have had better track record at transitioning between consoles. But it's like, okay, look, the DS went bled into the 3DS. And the reason why is that so the 3DS could establish itself, but they still have kind of like a little bit of a fallback with the DS. And I think it's going to be the same thing. As people are like, oh, well, the Switch needs to replace the 3DS. Well, it wouldn't do that in the first year. At the, at, the, at the worst, I mean, at the shortest time, I would think it would be three years into it. So I wouldn't think we would really see any definite shifting from 3DS until, like, 2020, actually. Like, I think the Switch would have to be out for at least three years and then fully... Because to me, if people are like, oh, we need to, we need to drop the 3DS in next year, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, why would you drop it next year when you're about to release another Pokemon game on it, and your console that you're supposedly going to replace it with is having uh, stock issues due to them fighting Apple for parts, and because it's fucking Apple, you're not going to win that, you're just going to hope that you can get something out of the scuffle. You're not going to win the fight, but if you get some punches in, that's all that really fucking matters. Punches, in this case, being parts. So, why in the fuck would you do this when the Switch hasn't really established itself yet? It hasn't been out for a year. People are like, oh yeah, we need to transition out of it. I think, realistically now, I'm like, alright, fine. It's fine, the 3DS needs to stay. And to be honest with you, Nintendo's always been that company that always wants to have multiple kind of ways of you getting in. Um, and we already know what's going to happen. People are so concerned about them switching into the console only like just doing the switch and having the switch cover both areas which it already is starting to do if you've noticed a lot of those ps vita games that like the 3ds never got because the 3ds wasn't strong enough to get the switch is getting like uh what is it knights of zero two which i think is originally a playstation 4 game but i think it's also on the vita it's another one of those oh well, we could put that on the switch and the switch version would be closer to the ps4 version than the vita version because i mean to be fair as much as people we dog the vita the Vita still gets games. The Vita's still getting games. It doesn't get any first party support. Don't get it twisted. Sony does not support the Vita at all. The reason why the Vita is still around is purely for third party. Ironically, I can make the same argument for Microsoft, but <laughs> I won't go there. The point I'm trying to make is, is that the Vita right now is being held up by third party. I think it's been held up by third party for like the last, I want to say two years, two, three years. It feels like, I think there's only been like a few... First part Nintendo, uh, not Nintendo, Sony titles like Gravity Rush, Tearaway, 
I can't. I, mean, I know they put some God of War and Uncharted games on it, but realistically, it's been primarily third party that keeps that console afloat, and that console still sells in Japan at least. So I mean, it's not absolutely worthless. And I think Nintendo's gonna is, is slowly transitioning into the Vita crowd, and then from there, will hopefully branch out. I mean, I don't know if how many people you know this, but we recently just got the announcement. Of, oh look, WWE. It's coming back to Nintendo consoles, which is crazy because they haven't been around for a while. A good while. We're finally getting Dragon Ball Z games again. That's another thing that hasn't been around for a while. People are like, oh, what are you talking about? Nintendo never got Dragon Ball Z games. Yes, they did. They got GameCube games and they got Wii games. They got like a trilogy of Wii games. The Tenkaichi series was on the Wii. We stopped getting we stopped getting Dragon Ball Z games as soon as we hit Wii U era. And the fact that they couldn't run, like, we couldn't get Storm, the Naruto Storm series, and we couldn't get, um, what was the other one? Oh, the Raging Blast series and shit. And then we're now just kind of catching up with Xenoverse and hopefully Fighters. To me, it's like the Switch needs to kind of get its foot in the ground. Like, we're all overly concerned about all these little things. The Switch needs to get its foot in the ground, but you're trying to get the, you're trying to kick the 3DS out the door. On top of that, I don't know how many people know, but... Nintendo's are pretty notorious on their handout side for re fucking ramping and re pushing out the same console with added additions and improvements all the goddamn time. Hence why the 3DS has like six variations and the DS has like four variations. The Game Boy Advance only had I think like two, which was the Game Boy Advance SP and then the Game Boy Micro. Uh, I think those were the only or Game Boy Advance Micro. I don't know what it's actually fully called. But Nintendo's increasingly over the years been pushing out more variations of their handhelds. If the Switch were to take that place, that means you got six variations of the Switch hanging around. And I don't really think we need to do all that. I think I think Nintendo wants to keep the dual screen. There are just also there are just certain games that I think inherently there are going to be lesser versions of the game playing them on a single screen. And some of you might sit there and go, "But we can do it. We can translate it." Like Pokemon, for example, we're getting a mainline Pokemon game. Well, that's great, but that's not going. I'm not going to lie. I already know. This I can. I can. I highly doubt it. I mean this. I highly doubt they can make the Pokemon experience more streamlined on the Switch than it was already perfected on the 3DS. The 3DS had that shit down to a T. To go and think about, it, we've been playing Pokemon dual screen since Gen 4, and we're in Gen 7. That's three generations over the course of like 10 years. It's, it's a lot of a transition we're going through. The other thing about the 3DS that was very popular and the, one of the reasons why I think the 3DS will still kind of hang around and I think I think Nintendo having an handheld is just smart in general because of finances. I mean, as we've seen, the 3DS has been carrying the system. Now, obviously, beefing up the 3DS and making it a newer version, like, because I, I, really what they need to do is when they, they come out a new with a new handheld that's way more like a companion to the Switch. It's like Switch handheld mode, but you've got to give it some type of flair because you can't just have two Switch-like consoles on the market and like one be less appealing than the other. There's got to be some draw to it. But, uh, what was I going to say? But uh, as far as uh, the reason why I think the 3DS still has a home and the reason why I think the 3DS is still valued is because most third-party companies who put games on the 3DS get major returns on it. Like, the, the thing about it, the 3DS is like the, it's the easiest financial decision to make with IPs. Because it's the three, it's the 3DS. For example, think about it. Think about how many IPs of, or how many games or game variations have started on the 3DS and then went to consoles. Sinrin Kagra started on the 3DS. Resident Evil, same thing. Resident Evil Revelations started on the 3DS. There, now we got a sequel for it. Now granted, Resident Evil Revelations 2, I've heard very bad things about. But the point I'm making is, most third-party companies will put their games on the 3S because one, because of its low polygon count, there's you don't have, you don't make grass you don't have to make graphically intensive games for it. So you're not spending that much money to make games for it. And then two, it has such a huge fucking install base, you can literally put out a half-baked game and make like millions of, and potentially make millions of dollars on it. Now, granted, because there's a lot of developers who do this. There, there's more, way more incentive uh, to make better games. But I'm just saying, 
the 3DS is like a perfect match. It's a cheap, it's a system that's very cheap to make games for and has an insane install base. So it's like you can make a ridiculous amount of money off of that. The Switch kind of is in the same boat, but not at the same pace. Because even think about it, think about it, even some of our favorite developers like Atlas, right? I think every RPG fan at least acknowledges Atlas as a good RPG maker, even if you don't like their shit. Think about their console games in the last, from the Wii generation to the Switch generation. They've only put out, like, maybe, what, three IPs? Three, four? Four. Persona 5, which came out this year. Token Mirage Sessions, which came out the year before. Uh, Catherine, which came out on the PS3. And I guess you could count Trauma Center. Trauma Center came out uh, on the Wii era. But then you look over here and you're like, well, wait a minute, on the 3DS and on the DS for that matter, Atlas has been punching out games like a madman. And that's the other thing. Because it's the 3DS, you can reuse your game engines, which I, don't, I know people I know people feel a certain type of way when game developers reuse game engines and only make slight tweaks. But it makes sense. You, you want new games and you want them in a relatively fast pace, but then you want them to make whole new engines for each game. That's just insane. That doesn't make any fucking sense. We've got two variations of Shin Megami Tensei 4. I think we have a good amount of double Survivor games. I don't know all of Shin Megami Tensei's, like, spin-off titles, but the point I'm making is, is Atlas has put out almost just as many games on the 3DS alone. Then if you include the DS, it's like, holy shit. And so the point I'm making is, is that financially, I think the DS still has a place. Nintendo just kind of has to see where the Switch ends up within these first year or two. Like, within the trial period, I think... The trial period for the Switch will probably be its first two years, maybe its first three years, and then that's when they're going to kind of look at the 3DS and go, what do we need to do? Because at this point, it's kind of obvious that the Vita, I think the Vita is still technically strong in the 3DS. I might be wrong on that. It's been a while and I don't know too much on Vita specs, but I think the Vita, not Vita, I mean the original PSP, I think it's, I think the original PSP is stronger than it, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. Um, I'm curious if they might just make the 3DS like a weaker version of the Switch, but a stronger version of the Vita. Like, because I think it still needs to be in that cheap, because I know obviously the reason why a lot of Nintendo fans that we need to move on is because of the Wii U generation. It's because of the whole, I got burned my Nintendo because I spent all this time focusing on the 3DS and then giving no love to the Wii U. Well, they did the same thing during the Wii and DS generation, and people arguably say the Wii was one of Nintendo's best generations games and uh financially wise and they were able to balance games between the ds and the three and the wii so i don't think i, I think it's literally just the wii the wii U kind of came in a time where the nintendo didn't have their shit together nintendo's kind of getting their shit together so i think they can balance out games the situation just becomes is that the because the biggest issue with the whole wii u and 3ds because i think there's a lot a lot of this whole we need to get rid of the 3ds talk comes from being burned on the Wii U era, which people blame the 3DS for. As much as people like to act like they don't, a lot of people have a lot of animosity towards the 3DS because of how, it's part of the reason why the Wii U didn't do as well or didn't get as, get the kind of games they wanted. They blame the 3DS. Um, and I just think Nintendo didn't have their shit together. Uh, but I would personally say they just need to rethink how they're going to do handhelds from this point forward. Because if the Switch continues its pace and continues to make money and get right back into the mainstream eye and people get more and more into it and these third party games and talk about the first party and the console sales and they start kicking up, the 3DS can't stay the way it is. The 3DS is going to have to change, it just depends on what way. Because the, cause now the problem, isn't, the problem isn't that the 3DS needs to go away. It's that how do you go forward from the 3DS? Because I think the dual screen design of games is still something worth investing in. I would say in some franchises, it's absolutely paramount. For RPGs, dual screen gameplay is fucking lit. It's just the fact that I'm playing on a, a fucking an old ass system that is putting out GameCube graphics. But like on a, like on a logistical level... Like, dual screen gaming in itself is great. I also love the clamshell design. That was like one of my first complaints with the Switch. Damn, I wish I had a clamshell design because I'm so used to the idea of my screens automatically being protected by the console itself that it's weird to me to realize that shit, I just got a screen in my hand. Um, 
And so, and I guess I'll, I'll probably, might, I might go into a different video about the, the, the future of handheld Nintendo. Um, because I think they, I think there's no reason not to continue the 3DS line or continue that, the dual screen line. The question is in what way and how. Um, it's, and how do you make, how do you make two handheld like consoles work in the same ecosystem? But, uh, that's another conversation for another day so leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below thank you guys for watching tell me if you agree or disagree and i appreciate the comments and the love and all the support you give uh and uh i'll catch you guys later peace oh Woo!